I love echo, any kind of reverberation or atmosphere around a voice or a sound effect which tells you something about the space that you're in is, um, I think for any, anyone who works in sound, it's, re it's really our, uh, something that we all love to do because you start with what's called a dry sound. It's a sound recorded in a studio and then you can um, create a um, kind of a fuzzy ball uh, of echo around this sound and it can make you think that this voice is in a, a bathroom or in a large uh, amphitheater or um, in a cave. Um, today, uh, this is uh, as easy as pushing the button on a digital reverberation device, which is programmed with hundreds, um, if not an infinite variety, of different kinds of uh, echo. Uh, Back in 1970, not only did we not have these kinds of devices, we didn't even have access to what then was a normal echo chamber. So in self-defense, I worked out a system of taking the sound that I wanted to add color to and actually going to the environment where I would get this color, say uh, a basketball court, and playing the sound or the voice in this space and on another tape recorder, I would record the sound and its echo. Um, and then when I got back to the studio, I would have two pieces of film running in sync together, side by side. One would be the original sound, and the other one would be the sound with this echo around it. And by changing the proportion of these two sounds, you could make it sound uh, dry, with just a little bit of echo, or you could reverse it and have nothing but echo and almost, not, uh, almost nothing of the original dry sound. Performance perfect is perfect performance. In this specific case, you're listening to another discovery I made, which is that if you are in uh, an ordinary sized room and play the voice at four times speed, so you've sped it up four times, and you record it on the other tape recorder, is also running at this very fast speed. Then when you play the second recorder back at normal speed, you get the original sound, but you get the space of the room as if it were four times larger than it really is. It's something to do with the physics of uh, recording a sound um, at that speed and then slowing it down. The original voice returns to normal, but the space of the room balloons outward uh, to um, four times the size uh, that it really is. So even though the, this sound that you're listening to was recorded in a living room, it sounds like it was recorded in a large um, space.